welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know though is that hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. Hopefully I have remembered. Uh, if I've forgotten, haha, <laughs> welcome to Glorious Technicolor. Uh, this is, as if you couldn't already guess from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read it, the description. This is the continuation of my PIC series. I'll put a picture there somewhere, or a logo, to tell you what PIC stands for, because, to be quite honest, when I started this series, not knowing how popular it would become, I gave it a ridiculously long name. And this is now episode, I think, 28, 29? It, I'm loving the fact that the series has grown legs and run the way it has and that everyone still enjoys um, collabing with me but I just had to shorten that title and uh, actually it's the lady that I'm collabing with today who pointed out that the initials do actually form a word and that beautiful lady in question is Anya also known as Pink Sweeps and we have decided that because we've collabed together so often we wanted a little bit of a, a duo name because obviously we're part of the Bitches of Eastwick with Nona and we decided we wanted a collab name just for us so we have chosen Stars Apart because we stare at the same stars but we are separated by the Atlantic mm. Ocean Shh! Rude! Anyway, as I was saying, same stars separated the Atlantic Ocean. So, if you want phone buzzes, stomach grumbles, any, anything else you can interrupt me right now? No? No? Oh, okay. I'll continue with the intro. <coughs> if you would like to see exactly what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, and what the picture is that we've chosen this time as our inspiration, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, well, yeah. welcome back from the intro. Um, it keeps raining and then it keeps stopping, so my lighting may go up and down as the natural daylight comes in and because I've got my strip LED lights behind the camera as always uh, but as the external lighting changes you may see some differences here so sorry if that bugs you, it's going to bug me when I'm editing it I tell you right, uh, hopefully hopefully the intro is in black and white I hope I remembered, I haven't forgotten yet but it, it's bound to happen at some point so, this is now episode, god, what is it, episode 29, I think it is, um, of my pick series. Um, I did not expect it to take off the way that it has done. Um, I'm absolutely stunned that it, it's gone this far. I love the fact that people want to come back and still want to continue. I mean... Most people have done at least three or four rounds with me. Some have done like five, six rounds with me, which is just, it's so nice because this is, this is something that inspired me, that I found intriguing. And I love the fact that so many others are getting so much enjoyment from it as well, from the challenge. Basically, if you've not watched any of these before, there are two rules to this challenge. Only two really simple. First one, you can only use the colours that are in the picture, so you can't add a colour in if it's not there. And two, you don't have to use all the colours. That's it. It's that simple. You can do whatever you want. You can restrict it to your eyes, you can do like a mask right the way across, you can do whatever you want. However creatively you want to recreate that picture, you do it. And I love the fact that all the looks have been so different. Um, 
in all these rounds, I think there's only been two that have been similar, and even those have been different enough that then you know they're, they're not they couldn't be mistaken for each other. There still there are still differences. So it was Anya's turn uh, to choose the photo this time, and she's chosen that. Now I'm looking at it on my phone because obviously I haven't edited it in, and thanks to the magic of your room, I'm waving it to the air right now. Um, and it's it's lovely. It's a beautiful um, dark beach, beach at night. So there's a lot of black, there's a lot of deep blue, there's some teals. And then you've you've almost it's almost like Aurora Borealis. Um, the way those lights are playing in the sky and then obviously reflecting off of the water. So I'm really looking forward to uh, recreating this one. And I've recently picked up a uh, palette from Sample Beauty. I don't normally like bigger palettes, um, but I've got their Hydrographic and their Immensity palette. Um, and I really liked the quality of them. And then I spotted this on Depop. The Paradigm Shift palette, which looks, she said, nearly. I'll just wipe my thumb in the yellow. I didn't dig my nail into it this time. Which looks like this. So, obviously, I am going to be very much focusing down this row here. Um, possibly sticking some of that in for the teal. Um, and then I've got sort of the pinks and the corals here. And then sort of the yellows there with the white and everything. So I think I'm going to be able to do everything with this palette. Now, I am a teaching channel. Um, I don't go as in depth with my teaching when I'm doing one of these collabs, but I do still teach. Um, and because of my chronic pain, I can't blend as quickly as I used to. That, combined with the fact that I want absolute beginners to be able to follow the tutorial, means it may go a bit slower than you want. Up there, somewhere, is a speed widget. Please feel free to use it. I will not be offended because, sweetie, unless you tell me, I'm not going to know. It can be your little secret, okay? Great. Right. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Let's get you zoomed in and I just want to talk you through two specific eye shapes um, and ways to still be able to follow the tutorial if you have those. Now my eyes are primed with my Crow and Pebble blank page primer. Now I originally got half a pot to try when I bought their loose pigments, their loose pastel pigments and you can see I have literally, I, I'm right down to the dregs but because I liked it so much I have got a full pot waiting for me. Over there, somewhere. I've been trying to sort out my makeup, so of course everything's now looking a mess because I have to drag everything out to sort it and then put it away. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Right, I've got deep set eyes, which are sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes. They are often mistaken for hooded lids, but we have very specific differences and the way that we follow tutorials has to be different too. So, when I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner, so I don't have a hooded lid. It's only if your upper lid completely covers, right down to the lash line, part or all of your... It's only if your static lid comes down and, and covers part of your mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded eye, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Double lidded eyes are different. If I cover the visible mobile lid this side, and then close my eye, can you see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away? And if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, I've got lid space there. I've got lid space there that tucks back in too. 
and it's those two parts of the lid rubbing together that give us the same issues. So we get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. Uh, if we're cutting our crease, we can't just cut the socket, we have to come onto the upper lid. And even when we use glitter glues, we get a bare patch right through there. Now, uh, the way you deal with them, very different. If you have hooded eyes, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your static lid a new crease line where you want your crease to fall. Obviously it's going to reduce the space between your new crease line and your brow, so just use smaller blending brushes than the person doing the tutorial is using and you'll be absolutely fine. If however you have double lidded eyes like myself, which I have heard referred to, uh, uh, if you've got deep set eyes, which I've been hearing referred to as double lidded eyes recently, fibro is killing me today folks. Uh, what we have to do is, as we're blending colour through our creases, just sit back and just check that when our brows are relaxed we can see it just above where the skin folds back in. And it's that simple. But as you can see, two very different ways of dealing with um, similar problems. And that's where a lot of people struggle, because they think they've got hooded lids and they haven't. They start following guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why it's just not going working for them and that's why right <laughs> rude <laughs> okay phone is on silent but it does buzz and i get the feeling that, that chat group is about to go nuts but i've got to keep the phone there because <laughs> i need the picture Right, this is a Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brush, basically a round fluffy brush. And I am going to start off going into... Now, these are not named. Now, I don't know if there was originally a sheet with them that named them, but to be honest, I don't really care. Um, I'm just going to dip into some of the different colours. I'll show you the colour on the brush before I apply it to my eye. So I'm going to start off with this kind of petrol blue. Yeah, these are very dusty, so I'm tapping back off well to try and minimise the fallout. The beauty with this Chrome Pebble Primer, by the way, is that it's not sticky. You can blend on it immediately, which is awesome. And you don't have to set it with a translucent powder, so you absolutely get the full beauty of the colour. This is the colour I'm going in with. I'm going to start off up here. Doing some little blendy circles. I do struggle here and here on both the eyes with dry patches. Um, but I will tell you if the reason that it's... If it doesn't blend well, I'll tell you whether it's the shadow or whether it's just my eye that's causing the issue. Now, you've probably noticed when I'm coming towards the eye, I blend in this direction. And a bit of a bounce at the middle, and I reverse the direction. A bit like doing a Venus waltz. Natural turns and reverse turns because what that does, I'm holding the brush right at the end so I'm put, putting as little pressure on the eye as possible it gently moves the skin of the eyelid round so you don't get any white patches or tiger striping um, because I'm 45 years old I've lost the best part of sort of 14, 15 stone over the last few years so the skin on my eyelids moves, basically um, but I know 20 year olds that have that got less taut eyelids simply genetically um, so this is the best way to apply your shadows so that you don't get any white patches now where this eye that I'm blinding got pulled around at the ophthalmic a lot you can probably see I've got super deep creasing just there um, I do sometimes have to stretch that lid out but we'll see what happens when we get round to that part I'm just blending this on. You can see it did start to go a little bit patchy on that dry bit there, but as soon as I added more pigment and blended, it's absolutely fine. 
So, Anya. I have collabed with her many times now. Um, both on her own uh, with Nona as part of the Bitches of Eastwick and also in larger collab groups including the, um, the Paulina Collaboration which as far as I know is the biggest collab group ever in terms of a beauty collab on YouTube at the moment. I've not seen one with more participants in. Um, all of the collabs that I've done are in the collab folder playlist uh, but I've also, as well as these photo ones being in the collab playlist, they're also in their own photo inspiration playlist as well. So, Anya is probably the queen of collabs. I think one month she had like 27 collabs. But one of the things that I love about her is that she doesn't care how many subscribers you've got. If she likes you and if she likes your the looks that you create and your personality, she will collab with you. She's not one of these ones who's like, I'm sorry, I don't know you. Who the hell are you? Why would I collab with you? Like a certain YouTuber who shall remain nameless. What was the reason that the Bitches of Eastwick got started? You'll have to watch the first Bitches of Eastwick film to find out why. Um, but we'd been collabing for a while before we became the Bitches of Eastwick. Uh, I'm just sitting back and checking that both sides look the same because obviously unless you're James Charles and Photoshop then your eyes are not symmetrical. Uh, I'm just going to clean some of this colour off on a microfiber cloth that I've got here and I'm going to go into one of the darker blues, still using the same brush, and start to build the depth of colour up. Um, yeah, so I've collabed with Anya a lot of times and I absolutely adore the woman. She is one of the friendliest, as well as being the collab queen, she is by far one of the friendliest women on YouTube. She will always help you out with a bit of advice or uh, just a shoulder to cry on. And she's not one of these people who, if you tell her something, next thing you know, everybody knows the something you've told her. Um, you know, the, the woman can keep her trap shut, let's just say that. Uh, but she is absolutely one of my best friends that I've made on YouTube. Um, and I'm so thankful and lucky to consider her a friend because she is absolutely the epitome of what a friend should be um, and I absolutely love the looks that she does now obviously I'm doing quite a blended look today Anya does um, edit, uh, editorial looks where rather than doing a lot of blending she adds sort of blocks of colour and has a more defined line. I mean, you can see here I've blended it so that it sort of fades from one colour to the other. And you will have a more defined line between the colours on her look. Um, and it's absolutely stunning and it's a really beautiful way to, to showcase all the individual shades that she's used as well. Um, so if you are looking for someone that does a more editorial style of makeup she's your girl to go to she really is I'm just gonna build a little bit more pigment up there because that dry patch is not liking it right now but you can see from this side that it's it's definitely my skin that side doing it rather than the pigment Okay, 
like I said, there's a fair amount of fallout with this. It doesn't worry me because I do my base afterwards anyway. I would advise everybody to do it that way around. Um, but especially if you're over 30 because otherwise if you put um, loose powder down to catch your fallout, it's the equivalent of baking. And as we all know, once you're over 30, baking of anything other than uh, nice cakes in the kitchen oh, it's not your friend not your friend at all right I'm changing brush now I'm still raw and magnical sheet pro but I'm going in with an eyeshadow brush which if I shape it properly you can see it's more of an oval shape rather than round but it's still a fluffy brush and I'm going to go into the deepest blue on this outer column which to me is a proper true navy as you can see and I'm going to run this through the crease in little short windscreen wiper movements just to lay the colour down and then I'll pick up a bit more and do a full windscreen wiper like so So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I really hope it has. Or if you're at the start of your day, I hope it is a good one. And if your day's been absolute poop, I hope tomorrow is better. So I'm just deepening up. As you can see, I'm just checking to make sure I've brought the blending up high enough there. Uh, obviously, if you've had to raise your crease up, you'll be following whatever your new crease line is. I'm actually really liking this palette. It's larger than I would like. I, I much prefer more sort of curated palettes. I prefer a Sort of a 12 or a 16 pan really, um, 25 really at the most and this is, what is this, this is 7 by 5, this is 35, so, but I knew that I liked the Sample Beauty formula having had two of their smaller palettes <clears throat> and I thought rather than dick around getting a load of small palettes I might just as well get this larger one and basically cover the whole lot in one go. Alright, you can see I've got some faint barcoding there where well, that is so deep so I am going to have to just Blend it out a fraction while stretching the lid out. Do not do this if you don't have to, otherwise you'll end up with horrific deep creases like I've got and I promise you, you will regret it. Right, again, just cleaning that brush off with a microfiber cloth. Um, I prefer that to a colour switch, especially if um, if I'm using my natural hair brushes, those aren't, those are synthetic. Um, but if I am using my natural hair brushes, I much prefer the microfiber cloth. But this is just micellar water on a pad. And I'm just going to tidy up the edges there because, again, I could have put tape down, but the risk you do when you do that when you're over 30. <laughs> is that when you take it off it pulls at your skin and we don't need any help at making our skin any looser than it already is thank you very much so I much prefer just coming in afterwards with a micellar wipe just tidying the edge up like that I actually think you get a cleaner edge that way as well. 
because you can still get bits that sort of go underneath the edges of the tape. Right, now do I want to cut my crease or not? I'm not going to cut my crease but I am going to tidy up the lid a bit. I've got some q-tips here or cotton buds for those of you in the UK. And I'm going to pop some micellar water onto one of the ends. Just going to grab a small mirror to look down into so I can see what I'm doing with this eye. I'm just going to clean off the lid. Because I don't want to lose any of that beautiful darkness above it. Which if I cut the crease it would cut it up to about here which I really don't want to do. So what I'm doing is just very carefully just going over my socket to neaten that edge up. And when you Cotton bud or Q-tip gets a little bit too near. Go to the other end. And I know what you're thinking. You haven't got any eye primer on there now. No, I know. I'm just going to pop some back on in just a moment. Right, I'm just going to pause you, I'm going to let this dry a bit um, and then I'm going to pop some eye primer back on and I'll come back and we'll finish off the lid area. Okay, so I let that dry and then I popped a bit of um, the eye primer on. I used one of the, um, one of the Jeffrey Morphe eyeliner brushes because this is so fine. Uh, as you can see. So I had absolute ex excellent control about how far it went across the lid basically. Now, I've got a pinky coral, okay, and I've got a teal, yep, and I've got a yellowy going into a bright white. I'm going to start off, I'm going to grab this brush, this is a uh, JS10, basically it's a smudger brush, and I'm going to go into the deeper tealy colour on that outer row, and I'm just going to pop that on the outer edge there mm -hmm. it's a shame this isn't a matte actually because the other shades that I'm going to be using out of this are matte Do you know what? I think what I might do is put the red underneath. I 
I'm just cleaning this smudgy brush off. And I'm going to go into... Yeah, so they've not got a shimmer. The right shade. Unless I top it with that, that could work. Right, I'm going to go into the yellow. I'm muttering to myself. I do that a lot. Regular viewers will confirm. I'm going to pop the yellow into the middle here. Both eyes, obviously. And just blending the two colours together where they meet. And then I'm gonna go in they've got like a like a champagne shimmer. I'm gonna pop some of that over the top of the yellow. Yay, that works. That makes it shimmery like the teal. Whoop, whoop. And it lightens it down to the shade that I needed as well. Awesome. Shush, phone, be quiet. Like so, and then for the inner corner, I'm grabbing a JS24 because it comes down to a nice point to get down to there. And I'm going to go in with the pure white, right into that inner corner there. Not the best white in the world. To be honest, but will it build up a bit? Yeah, it builds up a little bit, but again, not particularly spectacular. The white in the ABH palettes are better than this. Uh, the white in September Rose Slush palettes are better than this. But it will suffice. And then again, clean the brush off, and I'm going to go back into that champagne shimmer again and just. The white with it just a little bit just so that we've got shimmer shades all along the lid like that now I am going to pause you once more and I'm going to go and put some foundation and bits on and I'll be back to finish off this eye look so you'll see me instantly I'll see you next time I press the record button okay I am back and I am feeling adventurous regular viewers will know this means anything could happen so I've got my little Pokemon phone case with my favorite Balabasaur <laughs> And I'm going to put a little bit of shape tape. This is uh, 8B porcelain beige. Onto the phone case. 
and then I'm going to use <clears throat> this is actually an artist's brush in size one you can see just how fine that goes I'm going to pick up some of this shape tape and with my brows relaxed above my crease I am drawing a line which I'm going to wing out at the edge like so. And now I'm going to attempt to do the same thing the other side. The worst bit is to try and get them to match but they can be like my eyebrows, they can be kissing cousins. This lid moves a lot more so you can see my line is not as smooth this side. Which is really annoying. So I'm doing my best to neaten it up a bit. Oh, I think I've got that about the same. Get in, bomber. I'm just going to thicken this line up a little bit to match the other side. That's about even. And then here I have got Trying to find out which one's my finest. I could go in with another pencil brush actually, one of the um, artist's brushes. But I'm going to go in with this one, this angled liner brush. And I'm going to go into sort of pinky corally shade and I'm going to gently try and add this onto the concealer
I'm kind of fluffing the colour up so it gives me loose pigment to pick up in the pan. Which is why I'm getting some fall out here. Now, this is probably going to take quite a while to do. So depending on how long the video is, I might speed this bit up. It was a bugger to do, but with practice, it's it's not too bad. It's it's really all about just taking your time and making sure you've got a steady hand. That's the worst bit. If you've got a steady hand, you'll be absolutely fine. If you struggle with that, try resting your elbow on the table to support the arm, and then just go in. Right. I am going to go in with that deepest blue that I used before. And I'm going to join it up with the outside there. And then gently run it along the lower lash line. This is just the flat top brush that I showed you earlier. Um, you can go back in with a smudger brush if you want, I just prefer this one. And uh, the other brush that I absolutely love using for this, this is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette and it's flat at the top but it's super chunky. So it's really good for um, blending out under your lower lash line. And I'm going to go into I think the teal that I used on the outside there, although it's a shimmer, if you're careful when you do this, you can actually blend with a shimmer. Just to soften that lower lash line a little bit. like so. Now, highlight. I think I'm going to go in with the 
Nikki Ofra Tutorials Space Baby because that's got a blue shift to it. And this is a lip brush that I bought off of eBay about 10 years ago. But it's great for getting right into that inner corner there. And what I like to do is drag it along under the tear duct and just blend it in with the colours that I've run under the eye. You can just leave it in the inner corner like that though if you wish. I just think with my eye shape it, it sort of finishes the look off nicely. Because I can't use um, a waterline liner because my eyes just, my eyes are very wet anyway because of fibro and uh, it just wouldn't stay on basically, it would be gone in no time flat. So I'm going to pause you for one last time while I pop some more highlight on my face, choose a lippy, put some mascara on, do something with my hair I'll be back with a final look, so uh, please don't go anywhere. I am back. The lippy I used is a Colourpop Luxe Lippy in shade Getty. Obviously I used the same highlighter. And the mascara today was Essence Force Lashes Extreme Volume and Curl. So, what do you think? I'll stick the picture back up there again. What do you think? Do you think I've recreated the uh, picture? Okay, what would you have done? Which palettes would you have chosen? And what kind of eye look would you have done? Would you have done it like this? Would you have done like a blue smoky eye with uh, a multicoloured lid and a red accent stripe? Go faster stripes? I don't know, whatever you're going to call them. Or would you have done something different? Let me know in the comments section, I'd really be interested to hear. Right, if you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. I am still having issues where people are getting unsubscribed against their will. The other day I put a collab up, had five people subscribe from that collab. By the next day, four of my more older or long-term subscribers have been deleted. So far three of them have realised and have come back again but there's still one who probably hasn't realised yet. Um, it's really frustrating, it's like yeah, you, you gain five subs from doing a film and then you instantly lose four of your older subs and it's just... I don't know what YouTube are playing at but they're really not playing fair with any of the creators right now. Um, so yeah, please double check you are still subscribed and that you've still got the notification bell rung so that you get notified when I put a film up. Once you've done all of that, I'm going to need you to go over to the beautiful Anya's channel and uh, have a look and see exactly how she has interpreted that picture. Now, I doubt very much she's going to have done this because she has a much more editorial style rather than a blended style. So I cannot wait to see how she interprets this picture. I am so excited to go across and watch her film. Uh, please pop over there, say hello, say hi, tell her you came from 4F Beauty and I can pretty much guarantee that if you enjoy watching me you're going to enjoy watching her so do feel free to subscribe to her and show her the same love in her comment section that you always show me. If however you've arrived here from Anya's channel, hi, hello, welcome, Welcome to the 4F family. Uh, we are a very nice band of people who write very nice things in the comments. If we do have something to say, we say it constructively and like a grown-up. Now, if you've come from Anya's channel, I'm guessing that you meet that criteria too. So, <laughs> it would be absolutely awesome if you too would like to join our wonderful 4F family by hitting the subscribe button, uh, commenting, liking, maybe even sharing this. And uh, once you've done that, there's an awful lot of other films of mine that you can watch. Um, 
you know, just put your feet up and uh, have a bit of a binge session. Right, that's quite enough for me for one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you all stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.